Hi guys, I'm back. And today we're going to try a little experiment. I wondered if you can do a pour with watercolor paint. Now I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, if I was convinced you couldn't do it, I wouldn't even try because I hate to waste <laughs> good, good paint products. But um, these are just some cheapy watercolors. I am running out of, of everything. Um, so I just thought, well, we'll give it a try. That way, if you guys are running out of stuff and you happen to have some watercolors, maybe this will work for you. I did try it once already on a real small piece. Um, I'm going to use the green, the orange, and the brown. So I'm not entirely convinced I didn't create a little bit of mud because I shouldn't have even tried it with brown to begin with because obviously green and brown, are, I mean, green and orange are going to make brown anyway. So, uh, yeah. So, but my experiment actually went pretty well. So let me show you what I've got here. This is what we got and it looks like an acrylic pour except it's watercolor. So I'm not sure how it's going to dry. The edges have started to dry already because it's been several hours and they're drying flat. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Now that's just an ugly piece. It was just a little sample to see if this was going to work. But I did do it one time before that uh, and I had only used like my normal mix which would be the paint, Floetrol and a little bit of chilled distilled water. And um, it was a little thick so then I tried adding a little bit of pouring medium to it and re-poured it and that's what I got. So um, I just didn't want to add a, more water to it because uh, you know you don't want to add too much water to your to your paint because then it will break apart the binding and your cells will break apart or they will look sort of uh, sandy or chalky. So I'm going to just show you how I mix up one of my colors and then I'll pause the video, mix up the rest of them and I'll be back. So that amount of paint is, it says 0.32 fluid ounces, so about a third of an ounce. And then we're going to add, uh, not quite that amount of Floetrol. I don't ever measure anything. I think we're going to, you know, do, a, you know, probably around the same amount. Let's move that off to the side. And then I'm going to put a pinch of pouring medium, just a pinch of it in there. Let's get that dried pouring medium off of there so it doesn't somehow work its way into our painting. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to put a little drizzle of it in there, just a little teeny tiny bit. Mix that up and it mixes up just as well as the acrylic paint. Make sure you scrape your sides there. And it is definitely a bit thick. But this is almost the thickness I would make for my pour. So I'm going to go ahead and put just a teeny tiny little bit in there of water. And again, chilled distilled water. I always use that. I'd never use the sink water because your sink water, um, some sink waters have a lot of minerals in them. And if you have a lot of minerals in your water, it can sort of interfere with the cell making process. So I'm pretty much mixing this paint up as I would for a regular pour. You can kind of see the line in there and it disappears pretty quick. So I'm going to leave that. It's pretty thick, but I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up the rest of these colors and I will be right back. Okay, so I have mixed up my paints here and I'm going to get a little flip cup there and I've got my trusty silicone here which is the treadmill belt lubricant 100% silicone from Lifespan. I, this is the silicone I've been using for like the past year and a half and it is still mostly full so um, it's a really good investment. If you want some good silicone, go for this. You can order it online or uh, I bought it in the store. 
the sporting goods store next to the treadmills. And just one teeny tiny little drop into each color is all we need. Uh, let's see, what color should we start with? I don't even know. <laughs> I guess it really probably doesn't matter. So we'll start with the purple. Just give the silicone a, a quick stir in. I'm really afraid to use this big wide cup because I'm afraid everything's going to sort of turn to mud. But we'll be careful. Because we're using, you know, watercolor paint, I have no idea what it's going to do. It could turn to mud. It could. <laughs> Hopefully not. But we shall see. But just pour really carefully. And we're just going to go ahead and use all of this paint and hope that it's enough to cover this canvas. This is an 8 inch by 8 inch canvas. I hate to put the orange over the blue, but we're going to do it anyway. Let's go for some red before we put that purple in there. I'm counting on these colors not turning to mud, not mixing together too much because uh, all these colors together really could make mud easily. And with acrylic paint, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I don't typically have that much problem with it. But you don't know because we're experimenting here. I have no idea what's going to happen. And also, you know, if you think about it, watercolor paints are transparent. If you want a, if you want an opaque watercolor, you have to go for the gouache. So we're not really thinking too much about weights of paint. I mean, obviously the pigments are are different weights, but I don't know, you know, how much that's really going to have an effect on what we're doing here. We're almost out of paint, and our little cup is only about two thirds full. So hopefully we're going to have enough. Because usually for an 8 inch by 8 inch canvas, this medicine cup is just the right amount. Well, let's go for some more green. We might have a pinch of that left in a minute. Right, there goes the rest of the yellow. That's it for the yellow. Let's go ahead and get the rest of that red out. And the rest of the purple. We're not going to have any. Scrape the rest of that blue out. We're not going to have any left over for painting the edges, so we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed this goes well. If we used all the green, yep, we did, but. I still see a hint in there, so we're going to go ahead and get that out. And the rest of the orange. Okay, that is it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put my gloves on really super quick. Got my torch waiting. Got my palette knife if we need it. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and release that. 
kind of see it's it's a little muddy I think but it's not terrible we'll see once it all once it all comes spreading out there Okay, lots and lots of little bitty cells come up. Okay, corners are done. Let's give it a torch. Tons of little cells. There we go. All right. So we're just going to sit and let them grow a little bit for just a second. I've got my corner catcher ready. It's very rainbowy. The cells are. And um, I think I get more, more of these little cells when I add a little bit of pouring medium in there. So let's really want that canvas kind of wet. So we're going to Spread that out just a little bit from the edges so that we have something for the paint to sort of roll over. I don't want to take too much. Okay, there we go. Now the canvas is wet luckily and let's get our corner catcher Ooh, we got pretty cells they're they're just they're still growing look at these right there and those so very rainbowy hopefully they'll stay like this and they won't turn into mud as we as we go along because i don't have a lot of paint normally I, I usually have i think a little more paint on my canvas so we're gonna re go really slow so this might be a little tedious I know you guys are, you know, you like to skip ahead in the videos. So if you'd like to skip ahead, go ahead. I won't do too much chit chatting. We're just going to watch the cells. Hopefully, if you guys are actually listening to me right now, <laughs> hopefully I have the patience to let this go all the way. I hope the colors stay that bright. I've never used these particular uh, watercolors before. So I don't know, you know, in a normal setting what they would be doing. Okay, I'm not letting any down in the corners. I'm just sort of letting it all come to the edge and stop. And I won't drag it off there. Okay. Let's let the bot that come down a little bit and that come down a little bit. That way it covers that corner without wasting a bunch of paint. Look at that. We didn't have any paint come off of there. That's pretty awesome. No paint dripped off of the edge at all. We didn't waste any paint in that one. So let's go down this way. Even though... There's a caterpillar cell right there I don't like, and a caterpillar cell there I don't like. I, st I like to go from corner to corner. It just seems to, to work a little better. Well, I'd have to say my experiment so far is <laughs> pretty cool. It's working. This is interesting. I mean, I know it's you know, watercolor paint is just pigment and some kind of medium as well, but you know, when you paint with it, it's completely different than acrylic paint, so it stands to reason that, you know, it may not work. Okay, there we go. Now let's bring it back and down. There we go. Slowly but surely, and I'm trying to decide which side to save. And I can't really decide. I like this because it's real bright over here. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think we'll save this corner next. Okay, so let's get you going down this way. Slowly, slowly. Slowly is definitely the key a lot of times. You don't want to lose all the pretty you've worked so hard to get. And we're going to let some of that come off that corner because there's kind of an ugly bit in the corner. There we go. That little spot right there. Okay. And now for the last corner there. Now is where we have to be careful and not grab the canvas anymore. I don't want it to go too far. Because, I mean, most of this over here is nice, too. I don't want to lose most of that, which I probably will off the sides before it hits that corner. Come on, baby. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right, so let's bring that back. Don't want to bring it back too far because I don't want this to get too stretched out. Okay, that's it. All right, well, <laughs> Because we mixed so many different colors together, we do have a little bit of, you know, I don't know. I don't want to call it mud. It's just because we have so many bright colors, it, it worked really well. So if you're desperate for a pour and you have no acrylic paint, but you got tons of watercolor paint, try using your watercolors. Let's uh, run. I hate to even run the torch over because I really don't want any more cells coming up. But we got to get rid of all of the air bubbles. There we go. That's going to be it. Okay. And what's really a shame is that you guys really aren't seeing quite the brightness of it. Let's turn one of those lights off. That helped a little bit, but it's not quite. Um, I don't know, it looks a little washed out in my video camera. And I'm sorry for the noise in the background. The guy next door decided it was time to weed eat, so. And now my dog is drinking water, so my apologies again. <laughs> it's funny, you know, a while back, long while back, I think it was, uh, my dog was in the background drinking, drinking his water. Or she was drinking her water. I'm not sure which one of them it was. Anyway, uh, somebody complained to me. And asked me if I could put my dog's water bowl up while I was filming. Because the noise in the background of my dog drinking water was just too distracting. Well, my apologies, but my dog's water is staying on the floor so they can get to it anytime they need it. And I'm sure all you dog lovers out there completely understand. Not too bad. All right, guys. Well, there's your pretty for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think this was actually a really big success. Um, and again, the colors are a little brighter, a little more saturated in real life than they are on my video. I apologize for that. Um, and even though we do seem to have a little bit of, you know, muddying up, I think we have a good balance of the bright colors with the sort of duller, sort of muddier color, that it still works. I, in my opinion, it still works. And um, the cells obviously are fantastic. We got some really great cells. And uh, yeah, so I would definitely call this a success. Now, am I going to be doing more of these? Probably not, just because 
you use up an entire tube of watercolor paint for one painting. You know, using what six different tubes of paint, whereas I could use those six tubes for probably you know twelve watercolor paintings. So probably not going to do this again, but it was a fun experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> if any of you try it out there, please send me your results. I'd love, 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 even if they're terrible, love to see them. So. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you uh, for supporting my channel in whatever way that you do, whether you donate to my channel or you watch the ads for me, that's really greatly appreciated. Um, I do get a teeny tiny bit of ad revenue from that. A lot of you don't know that. So please watch the ads, even if they are a little boring. Um, and if you're a, a fellow YouTuber, trust me that I watch the ads for you because I understand how important they are. Um, and yeah, I love you all. Thank you for all the, the love and the kindness. I hope wherever you're on the planet, you're, you're having a lovely day and you're happy and healthy and take care of each other. See you later. Bye.